up next on Our Grace Family. Our guest shares how life was hard and full of challenges growing up. I, I don't remember a home. I remember moving a lot. Childhood seemed chaos sometimes. But after finding God's true love at Grace Cathedral, her life was changed forever. Everything I know about God I learned through Grace Cathedral. You know, it changed our lives. Plus, a special Memorial Day tribute to those that served our country and gave their lives for our freedom. Welcome to Our Grace Family. Thank you for joining us. I'm Reverend Steve Millar, a minister here at Grace Cathedral, and this is my lovely wife, Kathy. On today's program, we have a longtime member from Grace Cathedral, and she's going to share how God made a way for her family to come to our church. And also, she has a wonderful miracle about her heart. Well, welcome to the program, Donna. And before you share the miracles that God has given you through this Jesus ministry, we want to know some of your background. How were you raised and how did you come to Grace Cathedral? Um, well, from what I can remember, years ago, Reverend used to be on the radio. He had 15 minute programs and my mom started listening. So that opened the door for her. And, um, once we got on a bus route, we moved to an area. A lady that lived in the neighborhood invited my mom. She told my mom about a miracle that she had got and invited us to come. And um, that was it. That was the beginning <laughs> of um, us so learning about the Lord. You had a lot of kids in your family, so did they all just pile on the bus? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, initially not. Uh, yes, there were six kids in our family. I have two brothers and three sisters, um, and we grew up on public assistance, so our lives were not easy. So hearing about Grace Cathedral, and Reverend was on the radio. My mom used to listen to his radio program all the time. Uh, she became familiar with him, so when that we moved in an area, and she told my parents, my mom, about the church and invited us, we came, and that was the beginning. So during oh. that time, you really didn't have transportation. So no. your church was the radio program, yes. essentially. Yes, it was. Um, and we weren't, I was so young. Um, it was, I vaguely remember listening, but Reverend Angeli's voice was would always draw you in. <laughs> I mean, you would like hear that voice and it was always so happy. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I loved listening to him <laughs> on the radio when I was little and it, it was wonderful. So that had to have been exciting for your mother to actually get to see Reverend preach live instead yes. of just hearing him on the radio. Yes, and that was pre-Grace Cathedral, the church. Mm -hmm. um, we went to, I remember being at a service in the, a theater, um, Liberty Theater, that he had mm -hmm. rented for a while while the church was being built. So that um, started our So really, you started coming here. in the very beginning, I mean, after the tent days. As long as we had a way, yes. Yes, we were at the tent, yeah, oh my goodness. That <laughs> seems like so long ago, but. So you were, you did go to the tent? Yes, okay. yes, two or three times, yeah, when my mom could get transportation there. It was old time revival <laughs> <laughs> a meeting. It was just so, and so many people. Straw was, I was little then, and straw was on the floor, and I, think there used to be like them old timey pot belly furnaces or something <laughs> but it it, it was had to it was exciting. amazing yeah yeah it was it was it so really you've was. been a part of our grace family for well over 60 years now yeah probably <laughs> 55 to 60 years yeah so you've seen a lot of miracles and healings absolutely take place in people's lives all the time so Life did changing. you go to sunday school yes i did um so i went to sunday school kind of um, in the uh, church on Canton Road, it had sand on the floor. It wasn't fully developed. So we had Sunday school on the lower level. Over here would be a class. Over here would be a class. And uh, 
yeah, I did. It was, <laughs> I mean, there were swing sets down there, which you would think <laughs> swing sets, you know, in a church, but mm -hmm. um, it was, uh, it was great. It was in transition. It yes, wasn't it was. It was being built. That's right. Finished yet, but yeah. Yeah. still you had to keep on with the work of the Lord. Yeah, and it was right. exciting for the children, I'm sure. Yeah, it only got better. Time. <laughs> yeah. So when did you receive salvation? Um, when I was a teenager. Okay. And, I mean, and, in Sunday and, school? Yeah, were in you Sunday out school. of Sunday school? Okay, you were in Sunday um, school. Yes. Okay. Um, so you learned about Jesus? I learned about Jesus. I learned about everything I know about God. I learned through Grace Cathedral. Everything. You know, it changed our lives, our family's lives. What was, your, what was life like for you before you came to the church? Well, it, it was hard. My parents, um, we grew up on public assistance. And uh, they never owned a home, so we always moved a lot. And um, I would start out school uh, at one house and <laughs> in school at another house. They never owned a home, so um, it so was hard. It you was just very did hard. a lot of moving. A lot of moving and, and all the time. It was hard to get adjusted in yeah. every new place because you ended up just going to the next one. Yeah, mm -hmm. no place felt like home. People say, "Oh, I remember." I, I don't remember a home. I remember moving a lot. Right. And transferring to different schools. Our, our childhood seemed chaos sometimes. You know, my father, um, <clears throat> he couldn't read or write. So his job opportunities were very limited. Mm -hmm. And um, he would get s jobs for a while, but nothing to sustain a family like we had. So we grew up on public assistance, but I'm grateful for it today. Mm -hmm. And during that time, didn't your mother uh, battle depression? Yes, my mom, it wasn't uncommon um, for her to go to bed and she'd have days in bed. My sisters and I kind of grew up taking care of things that really she should have been doing, but she couldn't, really right. she couldn't. And um, So you took on the role of being yeah, a mother sometimes. Yes, kind of, sort of. It was really hard. But um, when we got coming here and attending all the time. Um, when we were on a bus route, we, we were able to come all the time. My mom got prayer for that depression and she came out of that <laughs> and it was wonderful for her. She got involved in the Sunday school and uh, it was life changing. So she got yeah. her deliverance. Yes, she got did. She went up and she'd had it, Reverend Angley at that time, uh, she got prayer. He let her know that she had been that depression had followed her all her life because she was not raised by her parents. She was raised by an aunt and uncle. Um, so she, she didn't really know her parents. So coming here changed her life. Getting And Reverend prayed for her and she was a different person. She got involved with the Sunday school, which she absolutely loved. And I'm sure that we showed her a lot of love. Oh my and, goodness, and yes, her. yes, <laughs> it, it was. It changed her life. It changed it for us also because she was more present in mm -hmm. our life, which she wasn't before. It wasn't uncommon for her to probably uh, spend days in bed. And I remember hearing her crying and I never understood it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was going on, but she was depressed. Yeah, unless and a person really uh, goes through depression themselves, they really don't understand true. what that person right. is going through. But the amazing thing is, is God does. He understands oh, and he absolutely. sees all. It changed her life. And he knew that yeah. she needed that miracle and that you kids needed her to have that miracle yeah. well, for your needed, lives to yeah, change. They, yeah. You guys needed a mother. Yeah, we did. And, and life was different after that. When she got deliverance and came here and got involved in the Sunday school, she spent probably 20 or 25 years in the Sunday school here. It that's made a great. world of difference That's in our wonderful. home life, too. It was great. I had a mom. You know, <laughs> and I didn't mom. have to be a mom. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so a miracle, great. Yeah, yeah, within itself. Well, we have to take a quick break here. But friends, stay with us. We have more to come. We'll be right back. Up next, a special Memorial Day tribute to those that served our country and gave their lives for our freedom. Then, we'll continue our interview with Donna as she testifies of God's saving grace and mercy for her father. Stay with us.
Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Joe from Silver Lake, Ohio shares this testimony. In 2016, I was having a heart attack and dying. I was rushed to the hospital by ambulance. Reverend Angley prayed for me, and God gave me a wonderful miracle and delivered me from the heart attack. Friend, tomorrow is Memorial Day, and we want to take a moment to remember all the men and women who gave their lives for this country so that we can have the freedom and liberty that we have today. Friend, have you ever looked to the cross and considered the price that was paid for you and me? God gave all his love when he gave us Jesus. And because of that great sacrifice, we all have an opportunity to receive everlasting life and freedom. And now we have a special tribute video in honor of our fallen heroes. are here for only one purpose, to protect and defend democracy. These are the champions who helped free a continent. These are the heroes who helped end a war. Look up so you can see God and ask his blessing in what we are about to do. Let us continue to stand for the ideals for which they lived and died. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red.
We're back with Donna, and earlier Donna let us know that her mother received a great miracle for depression. Now, Donna, what about your father? My father um, couldn't read or write, so his limited, he was very limited, but once he met, we started attending Grace Cathedral, he met people that embraced him and showed him love, showed him love and it was different for him. So he, he loved, he always kept us here. I mean, we couldn't do anything but come to church, but he never came. It was kind of odd. We'd say, but you don't go, but you're going. So <laughs> we came. And fortunately, thankfully, the church provided bus transportation that we rode for many years. And, um, I'm grateful for that today because it got us here, mm -hmm. you know, and I met wonderful godly people there that became little shepherds to me and just help, help me, uh, but you grow said in the Lord. He, he volunteered, right? He volunteered. Yes. He would wash church buses. Um, he would be a parking lot attendant. Um, anything that he could do, he, he would do. He just, he smoked. And he had a hard time getting deliverance for that. Reverend was very patient with him and kind and always took time. And he'd, he'd be okay for a little while, but he could never conquer it. So but he always wanted us to be here. You know, if we weren't here, then we weren't anywhere else. I mean, it was not like we could go visit friends or you go to church. So he... He had a good heart. He did. He loved the Lord. He loved volunteering. He would do anything. He just couldn't get over that hurdle of smoking. smoking. Yeah, it was very, very hard. And so he passed away at, um, he was 62 years old. And honestly, we didn't know if he made it or not. If he made Even it Even though heaven. he volunteered mm -hmm. and was here and would do anything that he, we just didn't know. You didn't know if he cried out in the end no. and asked Jesus into his heart. Didn't at the time. But later on, he did. We were in a service after his funeral, and um, the Lord let Reverend Angeli know that he cried out the last few seconds, mm -hmm. and he made it to heaven. That's beautiful. And it is. It's so precious. It's just, it's just it, wonderful. That has to comfort yeah. your heart and your sisters. Oh, yeah, all of us and my mom, because he loved, he loved working, volunteering. Mm -hmm. But as we well know, that's not going to get us to heaven, right. you know, and we had to be here. Right. I mean, right. it didn't matter if he was out in the parking lot. We were here. Mm -hmm. So he, he recognized the need for Christ and the need for, for our lives because of our history. So he is made it to heaven. He's yes, in heaven today. And that shows God's mercy. It does, isn't it? That's wonderful. It that is. a person can just cry out to God in the end and God will save them. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, it's not by works. You can't make it no, into heaven by works. No, you, no. you have to have that true salvation. And, and dad had so many limitations in life anyway. He couldn't read or write. So he was very limited in jobs that he could get. So when he, we started attending here and people embraced him, they were, they were mm -hmm. kind to him. Well, they know you can, you're not supposed to judge anybody. Right. So they probably, he probably felt comfortable around our other volunteers because they were all probably just, they you know, love. had unity. Yeah, they showed him so much love. People were so kind to him and to our family. I mean, it's... Love makes a difference. Yes. Oh, it does. God's yes. love. It's wonderful. And, and when you're a parent and you see your children getting a lot of love from other people, it makes you want your children to go to that church. Yeah. This mm -hmm. ministry raised me, <laughs> and, and uh, what, what my parents couldn't give me, I got here. At church. I got through God's people and, and Reverend so Angeli. Important. It was wonderful. You not only were raised here, but the Lord has really moved for you in different ways physically for yes. your body. Can you yes. share a miracle with us? Uh, sure. Um, I started having years ago um, issues with um, my heart racing. Um, and it got to be where it was very obvious to me. And, and my dad had heart trouble. He died of a massive heart attack. So I, the history was there. And um, I went to my doctor and he ordered a stress test. And I w went for the stress test, got prayer before I went to the, for the stress test. And I thought I, I was going to get a bad thing. You know, your heart's in bad shape. You're going to need... Um, 
what I, AFib, AFib, I didn't know what it was. It just was crazy. But um, I got prayer mm -hmm. and I went for the stress test and everything was fine. And it's great. I mean, I've had a heart miracle. I've had a back miracle. Um, God's been good. So your him. heart after you receive prayer just went normal? Yes. yes. You, didn't, the you thing didn't have the symptoms? symptoms? No, I didn't have. It was, I knew it was God because I knew how I felt. And uh, only God could do that, mm -hmm. make that difference. And it was instant. It's like before I'm going to get these tests, I have all these symptoms and I get prayer and I go get the tests and everything. <laughs> That's wonderful. I know it is. It's great. Now, it's you mentioned a back miracle. What happened with that? I'm not sure what happened. I was on vacation one year and I sat down on a chair. I dropped in a chair. It was a low beach chair and I thought it was higher and I fell in it. And I felt this burning sensation go up my back. And I said, oh, this can't be good, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it progressively got worse. And um, I had to go for therapy and I had injured a... Um, muscle back there, sciatic nerve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And That's very painful. Oh, it was horrible. I, I, it burnt all the time. I couldn't move certain ways. I was out of work on uh, leave for eight weeks from work, getting therapy and that for it. And I went backstage finally. I should have you know, should have known, but I went backstage and Reverend Angie prayed for me. And I put my hands flat on the floor and I stood up and it was fine. Wow, that's amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> only God can do those. When you know right. only God does something, mm -hmm. it really sends your faith right up there. And you're just like, wow, right. that's amazing. Now, didn't you also have a miracle for your kidney as well? Yes, I did. Um, many years ago, I started having issues um, with pain in my side. And it got to the place where I couldn't move very much. I didn't know what was wrong. You know, you just think you injure something mm -hmm. or you some pulled a muscle, out of whack, mm -hmm. pull a muscle or whatever. And I went up and before the man of God, Reverend Angley, and he prayed for me and the Lord revealed to him that I had a damaged kidney. Wow. I know. I got, I never, I got <laughs> Did it prayer. shock you when he said yeah, that? Yeah, <laughs> because I wasn't expecting that. I was mm -hmm. expecting it to be something you, you weren't just, even thinking no, of kidney. No, kidney, no. I had no idea because it affected my back and I've, it's been fine. That's wonderful. So what has made you decide to stay at Grace Cathedral all these years, over 60 years now? <laughs> I guess the miracles and Reverend Angley and the people. The people kind of took us in, you know. Uh, what my parents, they were good parents and they loved us. It wasn't that at all. But without God, they you know, and we were on public assistance. We had so many things going on, mm -hmm. but we came here and people just loved us to death. And we so. stayed here. The Sunday school was wonderful. I was raised here. This ministry raised me. If it wouldn't have been for coming here, our lives would be so different today. It's your family. Yes, it is. It is. It's our <laughs> and we're family. so happy to have I love you it. as I love part of our part of family. It. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you so much for sharing your story with us. We do appreciate it. But friend, we need to take another quick break here. So stay with us. We'll be right back. There was a dilemma in my life there where when I was in college, do I continue in college? Do I go into the military? Do I start working for the church? I mean, I really felt a draw to work for the ministry. And I felt, but from the world standpoint, I was already committed to going to the Air Force. I had to do a whole lot of soul searching on what, what am I going to do with my life? You fast, you pray. You know, Reverend just kept saying, you seek God. You seek God, let him show you what's right, what you should do. So uh, I did. 
And I went and spoke to the Air Force people and they said, they were shocked too. And they, you know, it's kind of like, whoa, you, you've already made commitments to go into service. But anyway, I made the decision that uh, that was what God wanted me to do. He wanted me to go in anyway. I really felt that it was okay. There's a, there's a peace, there's a peace that you come to when you search what you want to do. And when you, when you reach the end of that, there's, there's a peace there that uh, it's okay. And then I talked to Reverend and Reverend goes, it's okay. Everywhere we went, God gave us favor, gave us everywhere. Favor, favor, favor. Good people, good, good assignments, good people, good everything. It was, it was okay. It was, it was probably the best time of our life. Welcome back and we hope that you enjoyed the program today. And friend, we recently received an email from Julie who let us know that she's really enjoying the interviews from members of Grace Cathedral. And friend, if you're enjoying the program, email us, we'd love to hear from you. Yes, and friend, I'd like to encourage you to receive your miracle today. You heard this wonderful testimony how Donna's mother was delivered from depression. Maybe you have depression. Maybe you're in the bondage of smoking cigarettes. Let's just pray right now so the Lord can deliver you. Lord, Heavenly Father, just move in a special way. Break their bondage and set them free in the blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Set them free in the blood name of Jesus and let everything come to normal in their body and give them the strength that they need. Amen. Friend, if you accept that prayer, believe that you are delivered and tell others about your deliverance. God bless you, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. We would love to hear from you. If you are encouraged or blessed by today's program, let us know. You can email us at OGF at the Grace Cathedral .org or write to us. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Ernest Angley Ministries.